This week on Christian World News, an ancient conflict erupts into modern warfare. Tens of thousands of refugees are on the run as missiles rain down on this mostly Christian population. Plus, mobilizing women in the fight to restore America. This leader says she res resisted God's call once. Now she's all in to see revival come to our nation. And praying for Pastor Yusuf Nardakani. This Iranian church leader is serving six years in prison simply for planting house churches. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. And I'm Wendy Griffith. Thanks for joining us. Well, two ancient nations are at war. Armenia and Azerbaijan are fighting over a small territory called Nagorno-Karabakh, populated mostly by Christians, George. Azerbaijan claims the area, although most living there are Armenians, as Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. While this is a small conflict now, it could get bigger. In the midst of heavy artillery fire, thousands of refugees are fleeing, while others seek shelter inside the war zone. Bombing. Buildings and houses are destroyed. We are so afraid of it. How can one stand it? How long will it last? The disputed area of Nagorno-Karabakh sits here between Armenia and Azerbaijan. When the Soviet Union fell in 1991, this self-governed region of Azerbaijan voted to join Armenia. Shortly after, growing tension between Armenian Christians and mostly Muslim Azeris led to war. An estimated 30,000 died in that war. When the fighting stopped, Armenian forces controlled Nagorno-Karabakh, while the international community recognized it as part of Azerbaijan. The conflict remains unresolved to this day. As for this current conflict, both nations blame the other, while the UN is calling for it to end. Many Armenians view this fight through the lens of the 1915 genocide, when Turkey slaughtered 1.5 million Armenians. To me, there is no doubt that this is a policy of continuing the Armenian genocide and a policy of reinstating the Turkish Empire. Family Research Council senior fellow Leela Gilbert told CBN's Gary Lane it's more than a territorial dispute. And it's usually referred to as ethnic or territorial, but it is clearly a religious. And at this point, Turkey has jumped in with mercenaries, actually jihadis. And this is making it all the more volatile. His agenda is a neo-Ottoman empire, as far as anyone can tell, with him as the caliph. And that's why Turkey's president, Recep Erdogan, takes this stance. With all our capability and all our heart, we will continue to be by Azerbaijan's side. French President Emmanuel Macron accuses Turkey of sending Syrian jihadists to the fight. An international human rights advocate, Baroness Cox, reports that Turkey is now controlling air operations for Azerbaijan. CBN News has learned several European parliaments are discussing telling Erdogan they will not come to the aid of Turkey as a NATO member if requested and are urging the U.S. to do the same. The U.N., Russia and the U.S. have called for a ceasefire, but Azerbaijan says it will be conditional on Armenia's withdrawal from Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia, a declared Christian nation since the year 301, and its people see this as a struggle for survival with nowhere to turn but to God. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thank you, Chris. Most of the residents of Nagorno-Karabakh are Armenian Christians. We spoke with uh, Sergei Rakubov, Mission Eurasia, about Armenia's Christian history and how Christians are under attack. Armenia is one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. Uh, what's happening to the Christians in this region right now? Uh, Armenia is one of the uh, oldest Christian nations there, and it goes back to the third century, uh, to the time of St. Gregory, when he brought Christianity, or Gregory in Lighter, who brought Christianity to that area. And according to the history, they say so that even the first church apostles, you know, they were traveling, preaching in that area. Armenia was a huge country. 
with a strong church there in entire Persian territories there. Later on, when Islam started moving into the area, little by little taking the pieces of that nation, and Armenia found itself uh, surviving, fighting for their, uh, for their faith, you know, for their religion, for their uh, territories. The genocide in 1912 that unfortunately was not recognized by the global, global community yet on behalf of the Turkey uh, took a, a, a millions of lives. Uh, and uh, just recently, we see that Turkey is supporting uh, Azerbaijan when they reignited this conflict, trying to back their, take yeah. their territories. Yeah. And as Armenian Christians say, we're fighting now. We want to defend. We want uh, the uh, the Christian community stand uh, uh, against us, uh, uh, against of this invasion, and support us. Yeah. So I urge uh, you know Christians to pray for Armenia when they're fighting for their. Uh, lives today. Yeah, you're talking about the Christians in Armenia. I'm curious, uh, Sergei, how many Christians are in this Nagor Nagorno-Karabakh area and what's happening to them? Traditionally, this is the Orthodox or Apostolic Orthodox nation, uh, George. And uh, the statistics uh, support this number so that they say there are 98% of Orthodox Armenian Christian live in that province. And the province at all, all, all together is about 250,000 people. And only 150,000 live in its capital, Stepanakert. As we hear today, so that the missiles fly from Azerbaijan territory into Stepanakert and farther into this provinces, even farther to Armenia, uh, bringing lots of damage, death, and devastation. Talk real quickly what you guys are doing in Azerbaijan, in Armenia. It's just so saddening to see the conflict between those two countries, Armenia and Azerbaijan. And Mission Eurasia is heavily involved in both those countries, training young leaders in Armenia and Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a Muslim country. There is less freedom. There are more pressures. There are less opportunities. But the church is raising the next generation. And we want uh, the global community to pray for the church in Azerbaijan. But pray for this crisis in Armenia as well, where Mission Eurasia were heavily involved there. And we see humanitarian crisis is just unfolding. Thousands and thousands of refugees are fleeing for their lives from uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, from Stikana, Stepanakir, uh, flooding into those larger in, inland cities in Armenia. Mm -hmm. Pray for the next generation leaders, for church leaders, then they can serve these people. We need hundreds of thousands of scripture. We need humanitarian aid. We need resources to help people that are suffering there because of this political conflict. By the way, Mission Eurasia is working to get assistance to churches who are helping refugees from the fighting. Find out more at the Christian World News webpage at cbnnews.com. Wendy? Coming up, they're rolling through America, literally encouraging women to live out their faith and bring revival to our nation. These are times of warfare. You go into the strong tower when you're under attack. CBN presents The Name of God, the latest teaching by Gordon Robertson. God has given you the right to carry his name. That is life change. Discover the peace, healing, provision, and protection that can be found in the Lord's name. Plus, you are going to see some tremendous real life stories of people who have seen firsthand what trusting in the name of God can do. The thought of losing Noah was one of the most terrifying things I've ever walked through. I could hear my house being shredded, and I heard my wife screaming over the phone. I knew that God didn't lie to me. I knew that God didn't forget about me. This is God's promise. This is the way. This is the answer. Go into that strong tower. Get your DVD copy of The Name of God today. Call now or go to CBN.com. Nutrition. Exercise. Essential oils weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 9.30. 
as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 9.30 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to the broadcast. This week, the U.S. Senate begins confirmation hearings on Judge Amy Coney Barrett, President Trump's latest nominee to the Supreme Court. Barrett, a charismatic Catholic, has been criticized for her religious beliefs. That's why a group of black Pentecostals and charismatic leaders spoke out on her behalf. They wrote in a letter, quote, if Judge Barrett's belief in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and in the moral convictions associated with the historic Christian faith disqualifies her for an office of public trust, then our American values of individual freedom and the right to follow one's conscience are simply hypocrisy. Catholic News Agency reported on the letter. It was published by the Seymour Institute for Black Church and Policy Studies. In last week's vice presidential debate, Mike Pence criticized Kamala Harris for targeting a judicial nominee's faith during confirmation hearings. Wendy? Well, a new conservative women's movement is hitting the road, literally. Women Fighting for America is undertaking a multi-state Heal Our Land bus tour to fight for the soul of America. Recently, I caught up with a group in Virginia Beach. This is the first time in my life I've ever walked out in this kind of faith. Christy Hutcherson, founder and CEO of Women Fighting for America, says this bus tour was not her idea. God has called me. He called me in 94 and he said, Christy, you denied me. You called me in 20, I called you in 2012 and you denied me again. Are you going to deny me a third time? And I really was bawling and I said, no. Then God took control, connecting Christy in Jacksonville, Florida, to several like-minded women on a Zoom call including Seattle native Maureen Cowley and Michelle Swenson from the San Francisco Bay Area. It was exactly the way I was feeling. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and um, I felt a governmental call, and I just wanted to get involved. It was a no-brainer because I already knew I was supposed to do this. The multi-state tour started in late August with an urgent plea for women to put their faith into action. Mamas are the heart of the home. They're the heart of our communities. We're the heart of America. And right now in America, we have a lot of hurt. We have a lot of um, chaos and, you know, we need healing. We are going across every state. Um, we are talking about hope. We are talking about the Constitution. We are talking about the founding of this great nation. Um, we are educating women to understand what the two strategic visions are for our nation right now, because we're at a crossroads. They see overwhelming response at each stop. I had a woman crying last night at the hotel telling us thank you for what we're doing. And I think just the bravery of stepping out is going to help other women, other people, not just women, get involved in the future of our country. The group believes prayer, along with action, can help solve racial tensions and lead to possibly overturning Roe v. Wade. Every individual in our country has dig dignity and worth because we are all created in the very image of God. The group's bus tour includes events from Texas to Pennsylvania and will culminate at the National Mall in Washington, D.C., two days before the presidential election. We are called right now. We are powerful. We have a voice and we are going to be the heart and we are going to be the movement that literally brings back the nation to God. Well, they are still rolling across the land. To find out if they'll be in your area, visit their website, womenfightingforamerica.com. Up next, the pastor serving six years in a notoriously dangerous prison. His crime, planting churches in the Islamic Republic of Iran. That story, when we come back. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists, David Brody. That could be the next step 
in this escalating fight. Jenna Browder. Robert Mueller chose his words carefully. Ben Kennedy. He's asking Christians to get the word out. Bringing you the political news that matters. Get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation. Weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? The Name of God, a new teaching from Gordon Robertson. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Gain important insights into the protection available to you in the name of God. Discover how God is our healer, our provider, and the one who gives us peace. Plus, the exciting true stories of God's providence in the lives of real people. You get the answer to everything, and that answer will never leave you. The Name of God, available now. Welcome back to the broadcast. Encouraging news from the African nation of Eritrea. The Global News Alliance reports dozens of Christians have been released from prison in recent months. More than 500 Christians are believed to be imprisoned in Eritrea, many kept for more than 10 years in horrible conditions, even locked up in shipping containers. Now there are reports that at least 49 prisoners have been set free since July. GNA spoke with uh, Release International's Andrew Boyd about what it all means. This is an encouraging sign. We want to see them all set free. And more than that, there is no reason why faith should be banned in any nation on earth. There's no reason why faith and the practice of Christian faith should be banned in Eritrea. So we want to see full religious freedom restored in that nation. And we would call on the Eritrean government to trust its citizens to give them the freedom that is theirs by right. There are indications that other Christian prisoners have been informed that they could soon be set free. Good news indeed, Wendy. Yes, well, a religious rights group is calling out China for denying children the right to learn about and practice their faith. The Jubilee campaign sponsored a side event at this month's General Assembly of the United Nations titled China Bans Faith for All Children. Emily Gao of the Heritage Foundation read a statement on how China's government censors religion in every part of a child's life, from the public square to media, even the home. The Chinese Communist Party has enforced these policies through draconian punishments against adults and indoctrination of children, including forcing teachers to sign pledges not to attend religious services, requiring both parents and children um, not to at attend religious services or participate in religious activities, and even encouraging children to report on their parents if they teach religion. And it's not just Christians. Speakers also testified that children of all faiths, from Christian to Buddhist to Muslim to Falun Gong, are barred from practicing their faith. A 43-year-old house church pastor in Iran, Yusuf Nardakani, is behind bars serving a six-year prison sentence. He's accused by Iranian authorities of propagating house churches and promoting Zionist Christianity. Recently, I discussed his case with a member of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. Nadine Mienza, thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell us about the case of Pastor Yusuf Nadakani. 
Sure. So Pastor um, Yusuf Nadakani is a prisoner of conscience that I've adopted as a commissioner on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Just over two years ago in July of 2018, armed men came to Iranian Pastor Nadakani's home in the middle of the night, beat him, tasered his 14-year-old son, and then hauled him off to jail, where he remains today. He's currently in one of the most notorious prisons in the world, the Evan Prison in Tehran, simply for following his faith. So he, he's been arrested and tried on charges of promoting Zionist Christianity and acting against national security, really for being a pastor of a church. Um, that He was convicted, although he's been appealing that since 2016. So, so he is a pastor of a home church of about 400 people. He was born into a, a non-religious Muslim family, but is, but became a Christian at age 19, as in most countries in the Middle East, or all, really. Um, he's You're not allowed to change your religion if you're a Muslim. But most aren't quite as severe as Iran, where the punishment um, is extremely severe. Um, and he was actually earlier sentenced to death in 2010. And then because of the outcry against that sentence, he had ended up being released for time served in 2012. So he, the, the, the Iranian government has gone after him quite a bit simply because of his faith. Yeah, there is some concern about his health condition. T uh, tell us what's, what's the latest. Sure. Well, in September, he, he went on a hunger strike after the government denied both of his sons, Daniel and Yul, permission to advance their education because they had opted out of a Muslim religion classes, which you can do according to the Constitution. But of course, it came at a cost. And um, we and, you know, so we knew he was weakened by that. We we're concerned, of course, there's COVID in the prison. And there's been a lot of news that a lot of the prisoners have been released or furloughed because of the pandemic. Pastor Natakani was not one of those. So he's still in prison. He has a, an additional 10 years to serve. So we're concerned about his health, and we would ask um, the government to release him and, and hope that the U.S. government would negotiate it or negotiate would ask for his release, I should say. <laughs> Iran, as you know, is one of the most dangerous places in the world for Christians and other religious minorities, including gays and lesbians. Tell us what are the challenges they face? Yes, so they're really targeted because of their faith. I mean, we see this with Christians, as you mentioned, Jews, Baha'is, Sufis, Sunnis. Um, they're very vulnerable in many different ways. Um, the government uses a lot of different laws to go after them. And, and also, as you'd mentioned with the LGBT community, they use religion to go after them and, and, and having a lot of executions, jailing women, targeting atheists. So, so they go after people of faith and then they use um, religion laws to go after other people um, as well in order you know, to really um, target everyone who really isn't a, a Shia Muslim. And, and for that reason, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom has um, recommended that Iran be a country of particular concern since 2002. It has among the worst um, religious freedom conditions in the world, um, systematic, ongoing, and egregious violations. Those are the three words that you really have to meet to, to be a country of particular concern, and they certainly do that. A survey came out just uh, earlier this summer showing that, in fact, many Iranians are turning their back on religion, specifically the state institutional religion, in this case, Islam, right? Right. And we're seeing that in places like Saudi Arabia as well, where when people are forced to follow a faith, and you'll see the, the population not um, embrace it as holistic and it, when, it, when it's not a choice they got to make. So certainly that's what we're seeing in Iran as well. Okay, terrific. Nadine, as always, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. When we come back, a special prayer at the Western Wall will go inside Israel right after this. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. CBN presents The Name of God. 
Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. Jehovah Yira. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals. Jehovah Sidkenu. The Lord our righteousness. You'll be encouraged by Gordon Robertson's teaching on the name of God. God has given you the right to carry his name. Plus, you'll see exciting true stories of God's providence in the lives of real people. I could hear my house being shredded when I heard my wife screaming. I knew something was seriously wrong with him, and it was worse than we had thought. Become a CBN partner and get your copy of The Name of God. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. When President Donald Trump tested positive for COVID-19, Israelis held special prayers for his speedy recovery at the Western Wall. Yeah, pretty dramatic. Emily Jones has that story and much more from Jerusalem. Welcome to Jerusalem for this Inside Israel report, where we show you what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. The foreign ministers of the United Arab Emirates and Israel met face to face for the first time just weeks after their two countries signed a historic peace agreement. Germany hosted the summit in Berlin, and ministers from all three countries visited the Holocaust Memorial in downtown Berlin. They also held closed-door meetings, and the Emirati foreign minister said his country is looking forward to growing its new relationship with Israel. We, in the UAE, are looking to open up more spheres of new cooperation to make peace and to the economic opportunities that will be brought to the region. Germany also said it is ready to help strengthen the ties between the two nations and bolster Mideast peace. The chief rabbi of the Western Wall led a special prayer for President Donald Trump's speedy recovery from COVID-19 during the priestly blessing ceremony in Jerusalem. Let us say the blessings for the President of the United States and will pray for his healing and success. May he who blessed our ancestors Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Moses, Aaron, David and Solomon heal Donald John Trump. President Trump was released from the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center after receiving treatment for the virus. Other Israeli leaders, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, wished the president and the first lady good health. While Israel is under coronavirus lockdown, the military is stepping up and building relationships with those who need it the most in Jesus's boyhood home. Nazareth is Israel's largest Arab city, and many there are struggling to get access to food and other services during the lockdown. The IDF's Homefront Command is delivering aid, processing COVID tests, and providing other services. We coordinate between the municipalities and the Israeli government, which provides a lot of help in different kinds of ways. We are here with them. They don't have to deal with this situation alone. It's uh, a kind of... Um, um, cooperation between the IDF and the municipalities. The Arab population can often have negative feelings toward the police and IDF, but this coordination during the lockdown is helping change perspectives and unify communities. For more stories like this, you can watch our Jerusalem Dateline program at CBNnews.com. Back to you. So much, Emily. Thank and you, boy, Emily. I just love that prayer uh, at the Western yeah, Wall for our beautiful. president. Please continue to pray for the president and first lady and all of those affected by COVID-19. Yeah, and please remember to pray for the folks in uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan. Christians. Christians yeah. are in both countries uh, as well as in Armenia. Folks, that's going to do it for this week's exciting edition of Christian World News. <laughs> it was action-packed. It was. Well, until next week, from all of us here, goodbye, and as always, God bless you.